Peloton's Alex Toussaint. He's been called the go-to guy to train all-star professional athletes. Since he began leading Peloton classes back in 2015, Toussaint has used his lessons he learned from a turbulent adolescence to motivate his riders. What can you sacrifice in the next 10 minutes to overcome that doubt, overcome that fear of losing? What can you sacrifice to help your team win? In moments like this, you gotta remember, Peloton family, we're individually tapping into our own greatness. But collectively, we're trying to go far together, baby. Go far together, baby. Tucson's new motivational memoir is called Activate Your Greatness. I love this title. We're very happy to say Alex Toussaint joins us now. Welcome, Alex. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All I can say is your classes are so hard. It's but a tough class, love, yeah. Classes, <laughs> tough classes, love. A very big love. guy on the steady cam said yes, that you saved him during the, the, during the pandemic. A lot of people tell you yes, that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I try to keep up with you, but you were so good. You were so popular and so well-liked, but it didn't start out that way. No, I want people to know a little bit about your backstory. You got kicked out of elementary school. You got kicked out of high school. You got kicked out of the military academy. Yes, ma'am. What was wrong with you? Clearly, were you angry? <laughs> what was happening mm, to you? I had a problem with authority. Um, most yeah. authority, authoritative figure at the time was my father. Yes. Um, he got diagnosed with colon cancer when I was about seven years old, and that caused just a certain level of trauma within the household. So it became this revolving door of me getting in trouble at home, then getting sent to school, getting in trouble in school, coming back home, and I was never able to break the cycle. Mm. Thankfully, my father, just being aware and understanding that I had no sense, sense of discipline and self-accountability, he didn't want me to end up a statistic, yes. dead or in jail. Yeah, your dad was yeah. very, very tough on you. I mean, talk about tough love. Tough that's love. That's what you do in those classes. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. He was very, very tough, but it did reach the point, and it really touched me in the book, where he called you one day after all the fraction, and he said, Lex, I'm proud of you. Yes. After you had accomplished all of that. Yes. All of this, and we'll talk about that too. What did that mean to you, that call? Everything. That was the number one sense of validation that I needed in this world. Getting that sense of, I'm proud of you from a black father, I think we searched for it for our entire lives. And that was the day I went from existing to living. What do you mean? 4.30 in the afternoon, April 6, 2016, he calls me and says, I'm proud of you. I will live my entire life to try to prove him wrong, yeah. and I was able to prove myself right. So I go, I tell people all the time, I existed in this bubble of negativity. Mm. Now I had that release of validation from my father, I'm able to live this thing called life to the best of my abilities and without any level of resistance. Wow, and you found right. it on a bicycle. Yes, ma'am. You've never been on a bike never before. Never been on a bike before. stationary bike. Never, never. But that bike helped me move my mind and my body and helped me allow a new perspective of life. And in the book, I talk about how you view yourself as how you treat yourself. And every day I push those pedals, it carves out the identity of who I want to be and where I want to go. But Nate, so, Alex was cleaning the bikes. Right, yeah. right. You were cleaning, cleaning you were, the bikes. I'm mopping cleaning, the floors. Yeah, you were the yes, janitor at a, at a flywheel studio. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Cleaning the bikes. And then you got on and the rest is history. I want to talk about another moment that you said um, kind of changed your perspective, which is hitting rock bottom. Yeah. And it forced you to reevaluate your life. How did that moment change you? It was one of those moments in life where you hit rock bottom, you know from then on out, you have to go up. I know for now, I don't ever want to shrink myself into an environment I've outgrown, and I have to continuously do the work every single day. Emotionally, how did you know you were at rock bottom? I did not know. Until I got into a spin bike and started moving my mind and my body, that, that informed me that I was in rock bottom, because I started to pull myself from the dark space into light. I never was able to identify rock bottom when you're in it. And I think mm. for a lot of people in this world, you're never really able to identify what that feels like until you get pulled out of it. That's good. So what I try to do every single day is move with the purpose and execute with an intention and help people that are viewing themselves in that dark space, pull them out to this other side called life in a beautiful perspective. So Alex, you already mentioned a little bit about this, but I want you to really break down for our viewers what you mean by stop existing yeah. and start living and this 48 hour rule, yeah. that's really what I want. I mean, I'm yeah, so I like that by too. that. This 48 yeah. hour rule yeah. that you talk about when you're thinking about turning your life around. When it comes to the stop existing, I think a lot of people in society live in this mindset of I can't, I won't because they're scared to fail. My entire life, I would never even tried anything because I was scared to fail. But I understand now failure, fail, first attempt in learning. I understand that when I fail, to quote Will Smith, I fail fast, I fail now, I fail here, and I fail forward. That informs me, it provides me information, and most importantly, confidence to continue to go every single day. First attempt at living, oh first wow. First attempt in, first You know what else I like? You don't believe in the fake it till you make it. Not right. at all, not and, at all. And that, that surprises me, because a lot of, I've had moments where you fake it till you make well, it, you don't do that. Well that's social media, everybody does yes, it nowadays, Gil. True. Now when you're raising Why it, don't also, you believe fake it till you make it? When you come from a, a family of Haitian immigrants, there's no such thing as faking it. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents had to do the work and put our family in a position. They see right through that. Right, right, Haitian, see right through right, that, yeah, yeah, there's no level They'll of faking. They'll tell you right up. Yeah, you don't have to look for you. One of the things I realized. I got bon. Yeah, you understand, you understand. So what do you believe, don't fake, what do you believe? Don't arrive to your destination unequipped. 
take the time to go through the journey. Understand the trials, the tribulations, the setbacks, the adversity. That lets you understand who you are. And if you understand who you are at core value, it allows you to know where you want to take it. So don't ever rush the process. I'm all about trusting it. I'm not asking for myself, asking for a friend. Do you, are you available? <laughs> I'm not available. I'm thinking about Who's you, that friend? What's I'm her not name? Available. No, I won't say her name. <laughs> I'm, not I'm focused on this journey right now. <laughs> oh, you're not, not available. available. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, Alex. All right. All right. He said it's a two-seater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't riding solo. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alex, who's <laughs> on? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well done. Bike. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Activate. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer. No, really <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jana. Activate Your Greatness is on sale today wherever you like to buy your books. <laughs>